Hold on. I don't need this mic. I hope it's not on. No, it's not a mic. It's uh, it's my tape recorder. That mic has never worked. Okay, so just using the lectern. Since it's yours, I'll let it stay, Herschel. Okay. First, I'm going to do a couple things um, that I wrote for my mom, then uh, for my father, for my grandmother, and then, of course, after that, things I wrote for my pet fowls. Uh, this is a closet poem. I wrote it for my mother. Closet poem. It is raining, mother, and I am lying here quite warm with quilts you stitch surrounding me. I write this closet poem. It goes not in some storage dark, like other notions there. Place it beside your coffee cup or by the sewing chair. Towards your bosom chamber, I search for soft words to send. Alone you know its hidden door, no one can pry therein. Your life is ev ever calm, mother, little you do complain, permitting God to heal all as he yields the crops their rain. Is the old barn bulging with corn, the apples sunny red? How many zinnia buds remain alone? Along the flower bed. You ring a smooth, rel mellow routine, moving silent like day. What rushes others, you give only a petal sway. Our private love shall circle time, for death will never stall. The song of unseen hearts content, although the eyelids fall. That was for mom. And uh, there's another one, I'll find it. This, this one I wrote for my father. This is to father. I have a cautious love for you, father, as in childhood when I did admit to breaking a dish or leaving a chore undone. Surely a spanking would come. Only your words of once more hit me. Tears fell. I have a cautious love for you, father. When with teen loves I wanted to go, mother said, let father decide. Your reply after long waiting released my doubtful sigh. I have a cautious love for you, Father. You're like the mountain standing in season four, radiating power, invite, inviting silent dare to every gaze, motionless but possession, possessing boulders of uncertain paths. My dolls are dusty, and sand pies, sand pies you no longer taste, but your aim to protect and counsel cradles me like a child. I have a c constant love for you, Father ebbing, resting, heedless to the swish swish of living, only your being makes it stir. A smoothness brews with these adult years, the past to the present fine granules throw. All memories have become riders that spur the spirit on. Okay, poem for Granny. If ever I caught Granny napping, she would say, just resting my eyes and settling me about her lap, she then nibbled at my mud pies. Talking about affairs in church, I saw her drift into a doze. Admitting not to napping, she spoke of watching her ugly nose. Hinting of liking boys always was sure to cause intense alarm. My words soon stopped as Granny stirred to suddenly put dinner on. Together we did whip the cake as I began 11th grade. Granny promised a lovely dress, falling quiet by the window shade. One day I phoned the deer to ask what flowers from the frost to keep. Some moments hung before someone replied that she was truly asleep. Go away morning. Go away morning, unlike your sparrows of nothing do I cheer, but balks as the crow. Those sparrows are out of tune. The owl and cricket knows my song. Each time I cry in shame, they call to agree. Son, must you spit in my eye? Reveal not your tall trees, morning. Let them hit and be, or they this spirit miss will flee. The rag of night hides my despair. And among shadows, the moon is light enough for me, limping along the swamp where even the coyote does not drink. Roll not your streams, pregnant and perfume, perfume with the flush of spring. Morning, be the hobo on your whistling train. I wait the evening train, for like a cold wind, it moans. Go away, morning, just as my love did, and never come back. A lover's plea. 
a lover's plea. My hand is shaking for this. My hand is shaking for these lines to no fine meaning will commit. Perhaps the words will pour as wine if only you will come and sit. This dwelling slowly rots and I, and I am not concerned with its repair. Then why today and yesterday did I arrange and fluff your chair? Wallpaper peels at every turn. This table rocks on legs of three, but looking into each other's eyes, how can such things we ever see? No velvet no velvet carpet softens steps that creak about this wooden floor. Please hasten them. Allow your name to rattle at that old front door. I lay down on a borrowed bed. Someone quite well this pity knew. Tonight my limbs remain restless, waiting the warm contour of you. When time proved selfish and pulled me weeping from this tiny room, say goodbye to all mortal friends and quickly join me in my tomb. That was a lover's plea. Uh, this is a poem for Martin. This is a poem I wrote for Martin Luther King. It has been done, Martin. The day of your birth, a national holiday. Like a child, I skip and giggle with righteous praise. The church bells of Atlanta, Alabama, Mississippi crack the nation as gospel choirs in Delaware, New York City, Chicago, Milwaukee, Seattle, South Carolina, and Kentucky pout their lips in jubilant song. The prisoner in Lorton, Virginia paced his cell and said, what took them so long? A tribe of lawyers, garbage men, nurses, poets, painters, peddlers, jewelry makers, belly dancers, mailmen, conmen, dishwashers, school teachers, and whores huddled in Washington and sang happy birthday to you. A lump rises in my throat, Martin. I taste the salt of my tears. For it hurts, Martin, that on your honor I must screech and howl as if my flesh was aflame and cry, nothing has changed. For even as trumpets blast, a gunman loads and fires, the spirit of his victim joining your immortal breath. Martin, the addict still pricks his vein while the pimp kicks his whore onto the street. And yesterday I read that a man had no guilt about having sex with his child. Hunger stalks the world like a wild boar. Mother waved goodbye to sons that never returned from war, and lately there are more and more of them. In countries that I cannot pronounce, but do recall the bodies of dead women and children slaughtered for politics, which has no hair to comb or coat to wear. Do not leave your mountaintop, Martin, but arm that celestial choir as I guard my water and bread. For there are horrors here that make me walk backwards. School days. Schooling provided a useful grace, although scarcely I did care about the grammar, math, or other studies offered there. But kindly nature gave this shell a very peaceful, clever eye, behind a mask of reason keen, affording less the need to try. The constant ploys with friends made all the days seem playful and serene. Before that chant, open your books, echoed, then chased away the dream. Some notes were passed of secrets new, taking my mind from classrooms bore, until sweetly the bell alarm, concluding learning's phase once more. An inner flame enshrined those days, as often I recall the bliss of being there day after day, always denying time his kiss. But he would soon have it, and I to him became joyously wed because of a promise to care for me even when I am dead. School days. This is a crazy poem. Next is a crazy poem. Crazy poem. How 
do you write a looking ahead type of poem, a I'm moving on poem, a getting it together poem, a putting your foot down poem, a god damn it poem, a no more bullshitting poem, a from my own I'm kicking my own ass type of poem, a don't fuck with me and I won't fuck with you type of poem, or a bitch stay back type of poem poem. When somebody puts a razor to your throat and say, read my rape poem, see my I kill my whole family poem, cause my woman and my best friend was fond of screwing poems. Or some fool wants you to write a, a just how many black men there are in jail type of poem. Or a mother cries, honey all I got is tired poems, cause my son was shot doing a robbery poem. And you reckon the law can spare any more Mercy poem, all my life I've been a pitiful poem. And a child say, Miss Coleman, what about hunger poems? And no clothes to wear to school poems. And, and I'm ashamed to come to school cause the kids show off their middle class poems. And when my daddy drinks, he beats my mother until he sees blood poems. And all my friends got reefer poems. It's not easy writing a you don't pee on my shoe poem and I won't pee on your sh shoe type of poem when all around you there's so many shit poems. <laughs> this is a poem I wrote for my cousin Arnold. I wrote, I wrote the poem for his mother. Okay, uh, this is a poem for Arnold. Perhaps it is not meant for us to know the methods held by God and why he favors calling home someone wedged deep into our hearts. The joy of birth makes little note the quickness of death's anxious pain and call the thought that his warm flesh will not ever be felt again. But we must gather strength, for life insists no time be left to brood. So on we go with each day's work, although death habits intrude. Besides, with God our loved one now abides in a fine kingdom goal, where angels stroll among the gardens, composing lyrics which calm the soul. Okay, point for Arnold. Saturday Night Quarrel. This is a Saturday Night Quarrel. Uh... A Saturday night quarrel. Again you walk into this house with your wallet bare, posing like you got ten all well stashed away somewhere. Each night I ask the Lord if he will close that liquor store so folks can call us other names besides Mr. and Mrs. Poor. When, when you argue, darling, your lips become so plump and sweet. Those eyes become two flaming pearls. May I please kiss your cheek? Forget the thought of love and take some claim upon yourself. Repair this crumbling place and put some food along the shelf. No need moaning into my ear about a fever running high, for there is nothing in this town that horny love will buy. Oh, oh honey, stand by me and look at that old winking moon. Now let us carry on this chat, strolling to the bedroom. Your habits anger me, and no I shout to quick desire. You better change before I soon reveal a hellish fire. Going to bed I am. These old bones are tired and they just creak. Oh worries turn my hair so gray. Too much I sit and weep. God damn it, sugar. I do see a holy righteous light. We must welcome this mighty state with sacred love tonight. It has been well water clear that I have been a fool. A fuller man has crept in me of which you will approve. My face against this pillow wrote those words on t onto your brain. I mentioned being tired. Maybe you heard me say insane. The moon does look suspicious how it strikes the window sill. Now scoot up really close to me in case there is a chill. <laughs> southern portrait, southern portrait. And uh, I'm from the south, which most of you know. And this uh, poem uh, has some of the flavor of uh, growing up in the south and being rounded by the birds and trees and all that sort of thing. Southern portrait. Uh, this was one of the first poems that I wrote. And I like to say this because it sounds impressionable, but the, um, the Saturday Evening Post rejected it because of its length. They said it was too long. And this was my very first poem, and, 
And after that, I rent, went and wrote thousands of others because I thought talent was there. <clears throat> they, too, were rejected. No, not all of them. Not all of them. Not all of them. Southern Portrait, Southern Portrait. Okra, squash, tomatoes, potatoes, and green peas. Plums, melons, cherries, and blueberries sweating against the leaves. Pregnant fields under the watchful eye of towering pines. An elderly farmer carefully bending to turn his vines. Trains rustling by on weather-beaten tracks. A young boy struggling with his bloated cotton sack. Hedges surrounding houses with lawns cut neat. A man gazing at the dog that rests at his feet. Women rocking on their porches, thinking of yesterday. Girls skipping rope and laughing wildly as they beat the earth away. A short-clad youngster shooting marbles with his bareback friend. Remnants of a scarecrow blowing in the wind. Clotheslines strung between giant walnut trees. Pants, shirts, and flared skirts swaying in the breeze. Wagon wheels and broken... Rusty toys scattered near a dilapidated barn. Chicken and geese pecking and gawking all about the farm. Multicolored butterflies kissing flowers of shades galore. Bees robbing them of their pollen and returning for more. Bugs and spiders making their marks upon the earth. Bugs flying homeward to feed their new birth. Rodents scurrying across barren lands, rabbits darting across fields as fast as they can, deer drinking from a pond, looking up and beginning to run, always fearful of the hunter's gun. A weary mule pulling a dirt-encrusted plow, a gardener stops to wipe his soaked brow. Some cattle pulling at grass while others rest, a baby tenderly touches the mother's breast. Vivid pictures of the South burn and sting the very life of me, as well as the desire to express to others what I see. I only ask that at the end of my year's toil to be planted deep, deep beneath Southern soil. A Southern portrait. Uh, sharing. Sharing. And a one. Okay, sharing. A dozen roses, darling, I have never known a richer red. They are for your beloved mother, whose illness keeps her frail in bed. A tiny stone around my neck is glitter I will proudly wear. You brought it for the neighbor's child that smiled each time you visit there. One ceramic bird, perfect to place upon the corner shelf. You thought about someone at work that often dines by herself. A woolen shawl will surely guard against December's bitter air. Do I feel sad for that widow forever rocking in her chair? Your passion stirs inside of you, and my love light was flashing green until I thought about that poor old man sleeping alone in an old dream. Sherry. Okay. Let me try this. Bananas on a table, apples in a pail. She sits by the window, cause her man's in jail. His coat is in the closet, with shoes are on the floor. Been gone such a long time, may never come back no more. The radio is playing an old Motown sound. She's not really listening, feeling low down. He left one afternoon to drink with the boys when outside of the place there was a lot of noise. There was a crowd of people staring at the ground and upon the lay a man with blood all around. Soon there were policemen, all the crowd had gone, except her man standing with the body all alone. They took her man with them and swore he stabbed and killed someone he never knew for an old dollar bill. Others said they saw him wearing those exact clothes. So the judge gave him some long time. That's the way the story goes. Bananas on a table, apples in a pail. She sits by the window, cause her man's in jail. His coat is in the closet, with shoes are on the floor. Been gone such a long time, may never come back no more. The radio is playing an old Motown sound. She's not really listening, feeling low down. 
This is a, um, I'm, I'm a little old for this sort of thing, but at poetry recitals, you can get away with this. So I wrote a letter. I didn't send it off yet, but I wrote this letter to Santa Claus. Dear Santa, I would like a Mr. T doll for Nancy Reagan since she enjoys sitting on his lap so much. <laughs> And I and I and I want a real and I want real food for the poor in America. All Mr. Reagan gives us is cheese. <laughs> and sometimes jelly beans on holidays. Santa, isn't the president really the Grinch that stole Christmas and and the poor people in America the Who's that live in Whoville? I want you to park your sleigh at the Pentagon and tell those men that there is no need to make weapons and kill thousands of unarmed people to test their power. Besides, why can't the people in the military just shoot at one another? And for the Billie Jean who Michael Jackson says he never loved, see that she gets some sort of support for that child. <laughs> if, Michael is, if Michael is so sensitive, why isn't he more responsible? Just another case of hit and run. You know what the fellas say, bam, bam, thank you, ma'am. Oh, Santa, and Santa, isn't Mrs. Santa Claus, and Santa, and Santa, isn't Mrs. Santa Claus especially fond of Rudolph's nose that glows? It is probably warm, and oh, Rudolph can see what he nudges. Okay, Santa, I know you have other letters to read. For Dad, I want a better job. For, mo for Mom, a book explaining how all poets and writers do not starve to death. <laughs> she thinks all artists starve to death for the love of their art, and lately I've not been able to argue with her. <laughs> for all my sisters, I had three. Send them blank checks so when I go to visit, they will be more, more kinder toward me. Send my brothers pictures of me. They always pretend to not recognize me. <laughs> For my tennis friends, Pat, Lenny, Glendora, and Mom Bell, bring them lovely handkerchiefs because they cry a lot when I beat them. <laughs> you lie. <laughs> Santa, Santa, I would like a house for Christmas so that I can honor the muse. Oh, the muse is what put ideas in people's head when they write. And lately, Santa, I, ha I have to add a car to this list. And P very truly yours, Helen. P.S. Santa, my house does not have to be on the main line. That was my letter to Santa. Autumn disdain, autumn disdain. I. Autumn disdain, I do not like the fall of the year. Dull autumn holds no joys for me, and beauty shuts her, her door each time lovers are spied beneath a tree. What grace does romance gain strolling beneath the drift of withered leaves as folly wakes to laugh at those who wants their hair to know the breeze? This season's color shows the soul of every lonely prancing clown, for passion flings her gown of red, dismissing shades of orange and brown. The morning frost does sharply lay a chill along this bitter heart, for it precedes the sundown when from me my lover broke apart. Stupid scarecrow, may she always be found tending an empty field, so taken by the chirping bird that only wanted her hat to steal. While couple friends call after me, recall those songs by the bonfire sweet. I walk with anger, asking him to please pick up his heavy feet. Autumn disdain. I am in love with him. I am in love with him. I am in love with him. I wink my eyes at him. He thinks allergy. I shake my shoulders at him, rattle my head. He thinks, I'm chill. I perch my lips at him. He says, I'm frail. I am in love with him. I stroke my ears. He thinks, I itch. 
Put that romantic look in my eyes. He brings me a cup of coffee. I coo and sigh when he wanders close to me. He asked of indigestion. I tried tapping the floor to send the message. He whispered, tight shoes. I am in love with him. Stressed all of my syllables when I talked. He pronounced ridiculous. <laughs> Became sophisticated with my walk. He thinks it's a new dress. I purposely fell at his feet. He practically stepped on me. I am in love with him. I tried to engage in small talk. He wanted to know if I was to the right or left of politics. Straightened his tie and became close. I thought he said dandruff. <laughs> I am in love with him. Complained about the temperature, hoping he would suggest something cozy. Of course, he felt fine. I am in love with him, but I'm slowly changing my mind. <laughs> um, well, this was just given to me today, and it's unopened, so we'll both be learning about this for the first time together. And it says here that these are some predictions for 84. And it's sort of like they were just handed to, to me, so it's, I don't have anything personally to, to do about it. So I'll just share them with you. Nineteen eighty four predictions. Mr. T will begin classes in elementary education. <laughs> Nell Carter will be held at gunpoint and forced to look at her role and realize that she is the white man's mammy and resume singing using the beautiful voice that she has. Apartheid in South Africa will be lessened, but the blacks there will be forced to become Christians, but not the whites. John Doe and Jane Doe will meet and marry. <laughs> Superman will OD on kryptonite. Michael Jackson will marry, father a son, and name him Diana Ross. <laughs> Chris Everett Lloyd will uh, call me, and we will become a doubles team. <laughs> <laughs> These so are predictions, funny. ladies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She's the, the president will confess his sins. The president will confess his sins and spend the rest of his life writing, Thou shall not kill. <laughs> the president's son, Ron, will write a book on his failures at ballet. Nancy Reagan, it says it right here, Nancy Reagan will grow dreadlocks. <laughs> <laughs> I will hit the lottery for several thousand dollars. My, Lenny, Lenny, my tennis team will perform an exhibition at the U.S. Open. <laughs> Satan will come from hell to offer me precious stones for my soul and moral values, and I will spit in his face. <laughs> Marijuana will be legalized, and those that use it and those that those that use it and drive cars will bear on their driver's license, I smoke dope. <laughs> <laughs> the, mayor, the mayor of Philadelphia, Wilson Good, will agree to meet Jesse Jackson in an alley. <laughs> I will write my first play and hop on a bike and pedal it to Broadway. The Pacific Ocean will reveal the lost continent of Atlantis beneath it. Killer bees will attack the governor's office in Mississippi, and for the first time ever, they will not be reported to have come from Africa. <laughs> Martin Luther King, Frederick Douglass, John F. Kennedy, and Robert Kennedy will meet in heaven, and Reverend King will notice that the Kennedy brother's robes are somewhat whiter than his. <laughs> Marie Osmond and Lola Falana will disappear and never be seen again. <laughs> Bigfoot will show up at J.C. Penney's looking for shoes. <laughs> Princess Diana of Wales will get chicken pox, which will leave her face scarred, and, photo and photographers will stop taking so many pictures of her. All black men will begin dating white women, and all white men will begin dating white women. <laughs> 
Billy D. Williams will meet me. Ah! Billy D. Williams will meet me and fall in love with me, and I will curse at him and say I don't fool with married men, and then I will go home and cry and cry. <laughs> Eddie Murphy, oh, this is sad. Eddie Murphy will lose his vision temporarily while Stevie Wonder gains his, and Stevie will make jokes about Eddie Murphy's blindness. <laughs> the ghost of the soldiers slain in Beirut will return to haunt the White House dressed in the American flag. Nancy Reagan will be caught for, what? Wait a minute, wait a minute, look at this again. Nancy Reagan will be caught fooling around with President Carter's, with former President Carter's peanuts. <laughs> Dear Abby will make a video showing pimps how to treat a lady. The, the, Marines, the Marines will say that they have enough few good men. Michael Jackson will tell Brooke Shields to beat it. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Jackson will tell Brooke Shields to beat it, which will cause her to faint, and the scent of Michael's glove will revive her. <laughs> oh, this is an interesting one. It says that the next black child star on television will be raised by a black family. <laughs> and the last one, I really hope this one come true, Mrs. Grant. It says, I will find a job. <laughs> These are some predictions. Now, these were just given to me, so. Okay, Deloria. Okay, here are a few choices. Here are a few choices. A few choices. When the bombs on nuclear blasts come, I hope they don't. I will not be afraid. I will hurl my arms into the sky and unite with the elements, for I have become molecular lady. I will destroy this barbaric activity with scorching vaults that extends from my breast, for I have become electric lady. I will pull, grasp, pack, and pack this venomous fiend into a tiny ball, hurling it into world unknown, better them than me, for I have become superwoman. I will beat, lash, and tear at this monster with the strength of ten horny women. For I have become a funky woman. The penetrable beast will be almost upon me and will be destroyed by the perspiration of my fear. For I have become lucky lady. My insane insults and wild acts will baffle and tangle this vial of demons. For I have become crazy lady. Let them fall. I will fear them not. For I will not become dead woman, dead woman, woman, dead. <laughs> okay. This is a, I wrote this for my little sister. Well, she was little when I wrote it, and it's for Deloria. And it's very uh, simply, I remember how I love you, and I want to jump rope, play jack stones, make my dollar dress, be young and pretty as you are all over again. Okay, uh... This is a poem I wrote for Sonia Sanchez, who was instrumental in uh, making me take a serious look at my work. And particularly, I'll talk about it later when I get to the haiku. She used to do, uh, she used to do these free workshops down at our temple, and I couldn't understand why anyone who was interested in poetry wouldn't go to workshops taught by Sonia Sanchez. And when I heard that they were free, Lenny, you know, I really jumped on that. Uh, so this is uh, Sonia Sanchez, and you know, like I said, sprung out of being in her workshops. And so I call this poem Workshop Woman. Workshop Woman. Workshop Woman. You water me with wisdom and I grow, for I long to know the calm that looms about you. Is your state of being born of having served the people well? Survivor. You speak and I feel the scars and tremble in praising resistance. You possess the human form, but your acts hint of godliness. I got a temple in my soul. How does one take drops from the rose and shine the spear? Your banner weighs freely, reminding others that it is natural to care. The years have been bitter and I adorn the overcoat, but your shoulders are bare. What weakens you? Too late, frail I stand, but willing to drag the iron the mile. 
Workshop woman, accept this as my raisin bar. Field of cotton, for as the incense rises, I sink to honor all that is simple in life. That was for Sonia. Okay, this is dedicated to my uh, tennis friends and anyone else who likes tennis. And I call this one my teaching pro. I'm going to dedicate Randy. I'm going to dedicate this one to Randy Taylor specifically. My teaching pro. I taught myself to play tennis. <laughs> Have gone as far as I can go. Frustrated with awkward strokes, I went and found myself a handsome teaching pro. She ran. Before I, before I never had the least problems learning watching before I never had the least problem watching a tennis ball, perhaps it has a bit to do with him being so lean and tall. He wore this shirt to practice once that shows some hair atop his chest. The thought, I, the thought that jumped into my head no preacher could ever bless. For instance, he came in saying, let's work on your overhead. Something grew warm inside of me and I said, in bed? No, my volley stance is poor, teaching me better. He, uh, my volley stance is poor, teaching me better. He did brush my thigh. Oh, mother, I called out feeling at any moment death was nigh. Collecting balls, he said, Helen, today too many balls you missed. His back was turned, so I said, shut up and give me a big kiss. <laughs> I talked about my niece. I talked about my niece to see if of any kids he would speak. This tactic failed for all he said. Now, when you come back next week, that coach became ugly, and so he is out of my life. <laughs> Picture me in a new outfit and him saying he has a wife. <laughs> Okay, that was for my uh, teaching pro. I had, uh, I had the pleasure of meeting Humbert Howard, and uh, uh, his friend said that, oh, he's a painter with eyebrows art. She said, renowned. And so naturally, you know, I went in his home and I saw this, and I saw this work, and I was very impressed. And I know very little about art, but uh, I was foolish enough then. Because, uh, you know, when you're with a great artist, you want to be impressionable. I said, oh, I, I'm into poetry. And he, no, he didn't appear interested. No, seriously, he did. And so I said that I'm having this recital. And uh, I was so foolish as to say, I'm going to attempt to do something for you. So I did this for Humbert Howard. And I hope Humbert likes this. And I got to come out to do this one. Uh, and it's very simply, Humbert Howard, an American painter. Genius will not do. That has told another's art. You urge a selfish praise. I frown at the mind for a single testament cradling both talent and man. I wink marveling at the patterns of your soul frame before my eyes. They rise from a golden easel. Your spirit turns the carousel, make it stop, I want to ride. Such paintings should crowd God's chambers where angels stammer and applaud. Name the shepherd boy whose flute aroused your mood. Can you harness the wind? Your art admits a serene rolling piece. Are the ladies by the pond awaiting swans? The poses curse the finest verse. Shelley, Dunbar, Keats would have stuttered with their lines. Thus scarce can I champion them, but no, but no verse need I to awe. Your brush is a wand. Oh, please, paint me pretty along some landscape, wearing only the wind for a gown. Magnificent. Brilliant. Astounding. Each syllable greatness smears. The sight of your art speaks its own praise. Words become rascals seizing it, and raped, beauty bleeds. Consolation, every portrait, 
Every poetry recital should have something to console. Every poet should have something with which to console their audience. And this is my consolation. Con consolation. <laughs> consolation. And it is very quickly. There will be, there can be no nuclear war. There can be no nuclear war because, because Jackie Onassis would lose her teeth and hair. <laughs> Suicide, suicide. A soldier named Leroy went away to war, saw the color of his enemy skin, then turned the gun on himself. Okay, uh, one thing that, I, that I'm particularly fond of writing is haiku. So when friends call me, they say, what are you doing, Helen, haikuing? <laughs> but haikuing is a Japanese type of poem, three lines. Okay, and it's usually about nature. If you were to take a camera shutter and close it on a scene, that's what haiku poetry is. The masters, Basho, Busan, they, uh, they were masters at this, okay? So first I want to give you some pre-haiku forms. And uh, Herschel is waving back there, which means how much time I have. <laughs> oh, good. Well, that's very, that, that varies. Uh, we had this talk before, Herschel. I'm not going to have you interrupting my recital. <laughs> five, seven, five. He's right. Five, seven, five Japanese syllables. But haiku, the word haiku in America is two syllables. In Japanese, it's three. So, that, so a five, seven, five to them would be, I don't know how many to us, Herschel. Okay, so it varies, okay? So in order for you to have this argument with me, you've got to know Japanese, and I don't think you do, Herschel. <laughs> okay, here's some free haiku forms. Okay, here we go. Free haiku, free haiku, and then I'm going to get into the real stuff. Okay, uh, this, was, uh, this was printed in the Black Scholar a couple years ago. Uh, and I wrote these in high, uh, not all of these, but a couple of these in uh, Sonia's workshop class. I just never bothered to send them out, and so I sent some out, and Black Scholar took them a few years ago. Drops of water, three lines. Drops of water on morning cherries ripening red, ripen red, feed the hungry eye. Rich, black, unknown race, always walk into the wind, blow your minds and fly. This one was done for Minnie Rippleton, and the Black Scholar published it, too. Sleep, perfect angel, for the chirping of the birds sounds immortal tunes. That boy can carry a ball as about as fast as I can flip fat back. The only thing that come close to my man's goodness is watermelon. <laughs> I stood in the park while leaves clowned around and grew drunk with autumn's breeze. Ellen's tigers and bears of blue and white move to circus the sky. Love is sometimes like munching on an apple, for it gets good and it's gone. <laughs> Woman wants to go to heaven. Lord, come to supper. Cold lemonade. Dropping my last corn in a wishing well. Deep black man with candy yams. I feel you near me. You are so far away. My heart goes loop to loop. Another kiss and a butterfly I will be. Please chase after me. You are my baby, the tomato in my soup. Never mind the meat. Moonlight lovers with blankets of leaves, having their cake, eating it too. Last year's romance was like the sugar and water. I forgot to shake. My life is a maze. Nothing con connects, for I keep bumping into, into you. You look real fine. Buy me a Cadillac so I can blow the horn at you. <laughs> How old is the son? As old as your grandmother and her hickory stick. <laughs> Having you is a blessing for your love is good like Sunday supper. It is warm today, it is warm today, yet I sense for black people really cold weather. I meant to call you. I fell asleep thinking about how pretty you are. The girl in my class is very bright, for when we have a test, my answers are all right. <laughs> I, 
Okay, no matter. Freeze me here, and in some other time I will crack and flow. Another darkness hangs over my race, and the sun does not fool me. Daddy was chasing Mommy. I saw her smiling, running rather slow. My man told me what we have is foot stomping good. We soon lost the beat. <laughs> <laughs> Your lyrics have roots. Your lyrics have roots in nature, for they leave me barefoot and pregnant. Okay, now these are some true haiku, and these are these haiku have been published in Dragonfly, Modern Haiku, and once again, you'll and truly here, you'll see the nature. You'll see the the exact and the camera shutter. No imagination, no thought. Haiku is what is. Bitter cold. And consoling the boy, my cold hands. Facing the spring moon, she speaks of her son having died so soon. Stifling heat, farm boys in the melon patch, their bare backs. February sun, the children back in school, the snowman melts. Corn's been gathered, the scarecrow falls with the autumn moon. Corn's been gathered, the scarecrow tends the pumpkin field with the autumn moon. Smiling Buddha, the open palm full of autumn rain. Bitter cold, my aunt wearing her dead son's coat. Winter night, my landlady peers at a bill in the moonlight. Spring breeze, the sow grunts at dogwood petals falling in the trough. He is dead, only the autumn wind flipping through his music book. Drifting autumn clouds, being told of his death, words fly off like birds. Spring breeze, and on the old cat's grave, 